Today on 300 Seconds of Science, we're introducing you to one of the longest land animals that ever lived. Seconds of Science starts right now. Last time we met up with Justin, he challenged us to find the answer to this question. What does the scientific name Seismosaurus mean? So Justin, what's the answer? Okay, so Seismosaurus actually means earth-shaking lizard, which means that the animal that I'm actually standing within weighed so much that it's thought that every time it dropped one of its, each time one of its feet fell, it created a little mini earthquake. Like we would talk about earthquakes in terms of a seismograph, which measures, size, um, which measures earthquakes. This is Seismosaurus made so, is so big that it actually created little earthquakes when it walked. And it was so big, actually, I'm at, my head here is about at its knee. So this animal was huge, over 110 feet long, and probably weighed tens and tens of tons. When he says they're big, he means really big. A typical seismosaurus weighed 100 tons. That's 200 sacks of potatoes. That equals a lot of french fries. Looking at this scene, it appears the seismosaurus is in trouble. Actually, this animal right here, this meat-eating dinosaur, is a, looks like it's about to jump on seismosaurus, but what's actually gonna happen is they, this animal, seismosaurus, had a whip-like tail a huge, huge tail that actually acted like a bullwhip. So if you guys have ever seen Indiana Jones and he whips that whip around like this, crack, crack, crack. That's what Seismosaurus is gonna do with its tail and actually smack this guy pretty good. So Seismosaurus had that as a defense. Also, these type of animals called sauropod dinosaurs actually just got so big that they basically became incapable of being eaten by most meat-eating dinosaurs. So the two defenses they had were just being so huge and also some of them had these really big whip-like tails as well. The Seismosaurus ate plants, and at one time it was thought they used stomach stones to grind their food, but that's still up for debate. And for an herbivore, the Seismosaurus was huge, often considered one of the longest dinosaurs ever discovered. I'm actually sitting in part of the Seismosaurus here in our Jurassic Hall. What you're seeing here to my left is the hip of Seismosaurus, and to the right is the start of the tail, which actually stretches around part of the exhibit. And the reason Seismosaurus, one of the reasons that Seismosaurus is so important is that it is one of the most complete 100 foot plus dinosaurs. Most dinosaurs that get over 100 feet, we know from maybe part of an arm or maybe part of a shoulder, something like that. And then they look at other dinosaurs and sort of scale it up to fit it. Uh, Seismosaurus is actually known from a good bit of the skeleton. It's known from the hip here, the tail, a good bit of the tail, some of the back, as well as one of the discs of the neck. So this animal is actually known from about 20% to 30% of its skeleton. So it's one of the most complete 100-foot-long uh, plus dinosaurs known. The Seismosaurus lived mainly in northern New Mexico. It's actually found in a place called the Ojito Wilderness, which is actually a federal land, which is found federal lands administered by the Bureau of Land Management. And so this Seismosaurus is actually collected in the mid-1980s. It's one of, one of the first projects the excavation that the museum undertook after it was formed in the, in the 1980s. And so it started a relationship with the federal government, with the Bureau of Land Management that continues to this day. Uh, we still collect federal fossils on federal lands here in New Mexico, and we reposit them for both visitors to New Mexico and visitors to the United States to see and enjoy and learn from. Wow, what an amazing animal. I can't wait to see what we learn next week. The question for next week's show is, what type of animal is the best eye beast? Feel free to use your library, the internet, any scientific books you have to find the answer, and shoot me an email at 300secondsofscience at gmail.com, and never stop learning. You can catch 300 Seconds of Science every Monday right here on Good Day New Mexico. The New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science is located at 1801 Mountain Northwest. To learn about this exhibit on display, visit nmnaturalhistory.org.